Uh, yeah, so today we're going to have us a vegan debate. We've got Leon here and Armin. Uh, Leon is our pro-vegan um, stance. He's going to be fighting for the, the complete stance of veganism. Are you also fighting for the philosophy behind veganism, Leon? Yeah, so I'm going to defend the philosophy, but not necessarily all the practices of the vegan movement. Okay, great. Thank you. We've got Armin, who is, I guess we're going to call him the anti-vegan stance. Uh, for <laughs> vegans out there, he is our carnist. Um, and Armin, do you want to... <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, yeah. But also, you are you are here, you're moderating as well. But by the way, this is not fair, because we have two vegans, two pro-vegan is vegan... <laughs> I mean, the moderator is biased, isn't he? Aren't you biased, Ali? You're a, you're a I'm vegan not yourself. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm biased. Actually, I've been rejected by the vegan community, even though I eat a plant-based diet, and I do uh, try to do the least amount of harm for animals while I'm here on this earth. I've been rejected by the vegan community because of uh, my stances that I have on medication, mm. on vaccinations, and on their tactics and, and ways of handling how they talk to uh, meat eaters. So um, I don't have any friends there anymore, though I do still no at all. In ways. No, she was she was attacked by vegan terrorists. I know, but you know that's not the old community. So you know, yeah. Ali had to go. Ali had to go into hiding because of yeah uh, because uh -huh. of attack. I had by to vegan move. I mean, yeah. I had yeah. to. Uh, it it drove me crazy. Um, yeah. They knew my address. Horrible, so. they, yeah, <laughs> she got. Yeah, she, I, they, 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 they said that they have to find her children and rape her children. This is the yeah. vegan, and she's a. She's she used to be her their allies, and this is what they did mm -hmm. to her. So much so that the police got involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know this. Uh, yeah. So, but that's a separate. So that's two different discussions. Let's just make it clear. Like mm -hmm. We're going to first discuss whether veganism itself has any merit, but mm -hmm. then later we're going to talk about the tactics that people use in the vegan movement. And these are, comp I think, completely separate discussions. A lot of people try to use yeah. the second, uh, the, uh, the tactics that the vegan movement uses as a way to suggest that veganism doesn't have any merit. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they are you know, I get you, people do that with the atheist movement as well. They come up with examples yeah. of people that do questionable things in the atheist movement, and they're like, "Oh, this this is what they, this is what atheism has become." No, atheism is independent from uh, is always going to be uh, the right philosophy, whether or not uh, whatever atheists do. So. Um, yeah, so we do recognize that these two are separate, but we do want to discuss both of them. So first we want to focus, by the way, we, uh, Ali, when we get to the tactics of um, the vegan movement, can you, would you mind if you, I know that's a very, you know, dark part of, you know, your memories and you, if you don't want to talk about it, that's okay. But when we go to the tactics, would you be interested in giving us some examples of what happened? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Um, all right, so let's talk about the merits. What are the merits? Is there any merits? So uh, there are various diff uh, different definitions of veganism. So uh, previously, Ali used a certain definition about uh, the commodification of animals. I myself use an updated version of uh, the definition given by the vegan society, who coined the term uh, vegan, and that is... A way of living that seeks, seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing and any other purpose. So that's, that's broad and uh, you can go to lots of places with that. So um, I, think, I think the most important two words that are, there are possible and practicable. So uh, that's a certain a certain measure of pragmatism is required you're you're not expected to be uh, perfect we recognize that it is impossible to be perfect but you should try to do the best you can so all right but why why should we do this so that's that's <laughs> so that's the, the second part so i would say that uh, uh veganism originated as a, a, a movement for animal ethics, for better uh, treatment of animals. There are also other reasons 
that came up later, especially uh, in the latter part of the 20th century, when we realized the uh, effects of uh, human activity on uh, climate change and the, the proportion of uh, um, uh, CO2 emissions and uh, methane emissions and such um, produced by the, by the animal agriculture industry, which contributed to a large part to uh, climate change. So there are, there are various discussions about uh, how, how big this impact of the animal agriculture industry is. But uh, the general uh, scientific consensus is between 14 and 18%. So that's significant, um, but uh, it's 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 uh, there are other important uh, factors too, such as burning uh, fossil fuels uh, and basically just just generating energy is about sixty percent of uh, 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 how do you say um, CO two emissions and other kinds of emissions. Let's for, okay. so. So, so it's, 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 it's significant, but it's not the largest, but uh, we should take it into account if we want to tackle climate change. And so and the third reason is mainly about health, personal uh, health of, of human beings. And that's if you, you don't have a, a balanced diet, then you may get ill, you get, may uh, attract certain diseases uh, at, a, at a higher rate than you would usually get. So if you eat too much meat, then you'll likely to develop certain kinds of cancers. Um, but, and we'll get to that later, uh, these uh, risks to human health are usually exaggerated by vegans. Um, uh, they, they usually uh, try to, to yeah to, to exaggerate basically the, the, the risks of eating mm. meat. It, it, it's not that bad for human health, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, just, it's something to, to think about. For me, uh, personally, it's not that important. Um, I, I don't see it as a big uh, uh, problem, uh, only well, perhaps in, in certain Western societies where we eat too much meat. But uh, the main two reasons for me are uh, animal uh, ethics, uh, animal welfare, and climate uh, change, env environmentalism, basically. So the there, and, and there are all others, the fourth, but these three, the, is, these three is the, are the most important ones. The fourth one is religion, which we're probably not going to bring discuss today. All right. So there's this one is the animal ethics. Second one is climate ch change. Third yeah. one is health. Yeah. Fourth uh, reason people bring is religion, like yeah. Hinduism, and other yeah. you know reasons. Yeah. But I think um, we're just going to focus on the three, right? Yeah. Yes. So for me, I'm an atheist. So for me, religion is irrelevant in this discussion, and I do think that atheism readily leads to veganism. Uh, but I do think that skepticism. I was also a passionate skeptic. I do think skepticism and veganism are related because uh, skepticism basically focuses on uh, preventing skepticism harm. and everything are related, so <laughs> yes. it doesn't really yeah. doesn't really make a yeah. make, so, it, make would, sense. I would say that the goal of skepticism is to protect people from harm, and that the goal of veganism is to protect animals from harm. So in that sense, they are related to each other. Well, so skepticism you, again is relevant to anything we talk about, so it doesn't yeah. make sense for us to focus. Yeah, I mean, any any information requires some level of skeptic. Yeah. Uh, all right, but regard like so for the first one, ethics. Why? Uh, what's the argument with regards to vegan the relationship between animal ethics and veganism? So keep um, it a little bit shorter. You go. You, you're taking to like. Oh no! Don't my maybe job. Talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. But uh, so, Ali, you don't don't feel free to also comment, not just be a moderator. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So basically, it's about uh, not uh, committing any needless cruelty uh, to animals. So. Um, it, it it mostly focuses on on food and on uh, the, on meat and other other animal products that we consume and that we we kill or keep animals for. 
but uh, basically veganism is broader than that. It's also against bullfighting or other forms of uh, entertainment in which uh, animals are abused or for clothing purposes, for example, leather clothing. Um, uh, All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. See, yeah. you're, going into, you're going into too much detail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Need, needless, okay, yeah, needless cruelty. Okay, so um, this is this is where we get to the actual point. Okay, so um, when when you def- when you say cruelty, the way that we vegans uh, consider cruelty to animals. Uh, the way they define it, they seem to suggest that any killing of animals is cruelty. And that's where, that's my main disagreement with them. Uh, Because uh, I don't consider it cruelty to animals if they are, uh, if they're killed in a a human way. Okay. And uh, what is a humane way of killing an animal, would you say? For example, the thing, what is that thing that they put behind their, uh, what is that gun that the they bolt. use? You're talking the about the, the captive bolt pistol. Okay, yeah, that's that's one mo- method, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a bit, I think that's the main one that I had in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, as so well, there, are, whatever, there are two whatever, other ones. One is, is uh, 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 electri- um, electrocution, electrocution. And, and uh, another is gassing that's mainly used in... Uh, Poultry. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't really uh, care about. Uh, um, you know, I. The main thing is that I don't want to go into the details of how they do it. I, the main important thing is that it has to be done in a way that they don't uh, experience pain, right? And okay. I just, um, you know, like like I know, regardless of the technicality, I think that's where the focus should be, rather than not killing animals. Um, mm-hmm. I, I want okay. to understand. I don't understand why uh, killing animals in a in a in a painless with a, using a painless method. I don't understand what the problem with that is. Okay, can I can I say yeah. something to this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not just about how they kill the animal. Um, I think that the main problem that stems here is how the animals are kept before they're killed. Um, The conditions they're subjected to are terribly inhumane in some cases. Now, mind you, there are a lot of vegan, and this is another problem that I have for them from the vegan side, is there are a lot of exaggerated issues. There are some things that are just bad enough as it is. We do not need to exaggerate, but there are, there are problems with you know taking a a chicken and cutting off its beak so it can't peck the other chickens um the way that they have to stay in a tiny little cage their entire lives before they're killed yeah but that's my point but that's my point if those are the things that needs to be addressed not the not the killing i would agree with you I I, th- I think those are the issues, the way that the animals are treated, the way that they are kept, and the way that they are killed are the issues that we need to be focusing on rather than the killing of them and the eating of the, uh, eating the animals. I think uh, if we focus on that, then uh, if those issues are resolved, there's no, there's, you know, the killing and the eating of them, I don't see any moral objections to that the moral objection is to the way they are kept and the way they are killed okay so um then here my argument would be that um the the current methods aren't very uh uh safe uh, as, as so to say so a lot lot of um so in most countries in the world it's now required to um to stun animals before they are slaughtered before their um uh, their their arteries i think their their arteries are cut so through bloodletting uh they they lose their consciousness and so most countries in the world have now um uh put in uh, laws except, into place except needs... halal except when you have halal and kosher yes halal and kosher are the are the main exceptions that's true which so is unfortunate. That's, that's, that that that's uh, uh, that's the way that animal cruelty has remained because of halal and kosher. Yeah. 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 So 
Um, so there's a problem with all three main uh, methods of stunning. So, for example, the, the gassing of, of chickens might not work perfectly or the electrocution, electrocution of, uh, of uh, 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 chickens might not work perfectly. Like in about uh, 15 to 20 percent of cases, they are not stunned, uh, they're stunned, not stunned properly. So they say they still experience pain when uh, their, their heads are chopped off, for example. Right. But that's where the focus should be. To, to fix that rather than not killing them. Because if all this attention and all this focus on not killing and not killing and not eating animals, if all those resources and all that activism and all that media focus, if all of that was focused on fixing that problem and the way animals killed, I think we would have been way ahead in actually reducing animal abuse today uh, than when we are right now. The focus okay. has been on the wrong part. The focus has been on, oh, do not kill animals. Oh, do, mm -hmm. not, eat, do not eat animals. And this wrong focus on the wrong, on the problem, on the wrong um, area, the, the area that I don't see as a problem, has mm -hmm. actually prolonged animal cruelty and animal abuse. Because if all this was focused on better conditions and, you know, b better way of killing them, I think we would have we would have reduced it by a lot more by now. Okay, so basically you're you're taking your, a, a reform position here. Well, I am taking an abolish position. So I think the, the okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, compare it to how you 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 criticize Islam. You're you are for leaving Islam and not for reforming it. You because you don't believe in reform and you think that reformers are slowing the process down. So I am thinking about that. In terms of the animal agriculture uh, industry, I think it's but, better to but abolish this is, it to reform. This is it. actually the, this is exactly actually the reason I think reform has been slowing down this killing of Islam, and I think focusing mm -hmm. on something that will not go away, which is not eating animals, has been slowing down us reducing animal abuse. So and actually, it's how they were. Be, well, because I think that we are the focusing on something that people are not going to give up has made. How do you know that? Wait, hold on. Can I make my point? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> focusing on something that is not going to go away uh, on destroying the meat industry uh, has slowed down the progress that more people would have got behind on. If the fo if the activism was on something else, like if the main goal was to re reduce animal suffering, more people would got would have gotten behind uh, these arguments. If if the attention was, um, hey everybody, look at what these big corporations are doing to animals. Look at how they're treating them. Look at how they're killing them. Instead of pointing at everybody and calling them, you're a murderer, you're a murderer, you're like, instead of doing that, uh, if it was like, hey, let's get together, do, eat whatever the fuck you want, but can we get together and try to pass laws to reduce animal suffering, I think more people would be like, yes, I could get behind on that. More people would be like, yes, I mean, more people would be like, yeah, I'm, I, even most meat eaters would be, I could get behind reducing animal abuse. Um, I think Leon is frozen. Uh, then, then people are getting behind on not eating meat. Leon, are you frozen? Yeah, well, yeah we lost Leon. Let me write this down. I think I'm back. Okay. You're back. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, we're still recording? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Um, you were saying. I said it. Oh, I just said it would. Oh, God. I made. It. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. I just saying. I was just saying that I think more people would be more people, including meat eaters, would gotten behind um, arguments for reducing animal misery. Uh, saying, "Hey, look, 
look at these big corporations. Look at the way they treat animals. Look at the way that they're killing them. This is not right. We need to pass laws to make treatment on animals uh, more humane. Uh, more people, including people that eat meat, would have gotten behind that movement instead mm -hmm. of a movement that points fingers at them, at the, at the people themselves, and calling them murderers um, and stuff like that. You know, so I think that movement would have gotten a lot more popular and a lot more people would be able to support that and more animals would be saved from abuse if that was the movement that these people were actually uh, promoting okay okay so i can i can see where you're coming from and i also agree that we shouldn't call meat eaters themselves murderers because they're not uh, committing uh, the slaughter they pay others to do that for them so even though you know it has the same effect, it it uh, on an emotional level it feels like very unjust. But, okay, but my here's so, my question. Like, let, let's yeah. get to the meat of the problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the my my question to you is that yeah. if if is there anything fundamentally wrong within killing animals with itself? I'm not. You know, I'm not talking. I agree with you that animals should be kept in more humane ways. I agree with you that animals should not experience pain. Mm -hmm. But with fundamentally, philosophically, it, killing the killing part, not the mm -hmm. pain part, not the conditions that they're kept in. Mm -hmm. Is there anything fundamentally wrong with that of itself? I would say yes. Why? Because it it. Uh, uh, in cases that it produces suffering, so it must be an organism no, no, that is no. able See, to no, suffer. No, you're talking about something else. You're talking about torture and suffering and conditions they're kept in. I'm just talking about only the killing. All right, only the killing. Is there anything fundamentally wrong with just killing an animal and eating it? Not the. I'm not talking about the torturing and the inhumane conditions that they're kept in. Just the killing part. Is there anything fundamentally wrong with that? Well, if it suffers during... Uh, so, so not if it doesn't suffer. It's okay to kill an animal if it doesn't suffer. I would I would have to agree, yes. Okay. Oh, well, that's... Okay. <laughs> but it, it, but in many, agree, many so cases it does suffer, so that's the problem I have with it. I agree, so I can give you my arguments. Now I don't know what... <laughs> 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 yeah. like, it's okay to kill an animal if it doesn't suffer. Yeah, but I think that in, in, in so many cases it does suffer, and that's the problem. Right, I'll get to that, but Ali, mm -hmm. do you agree if it's okay to kill an animal if it doesn't suffer? Okay, yes, but I want to add more to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, there are certain conditions that I do believe that it's okay to kill an animal as long as it doesn't suffer. That is, if you kill the animal for food, uh, and you consume all of its body, and you don't leave it to go to waste. I have a problem with hunting. Okay, I'm an anti-hunter. Uh, I have a problem with someone going out to kill an animal, just to kill an animal, and then not doing something with all of the carcass. Um, mm -hmm. That is where my problem remains. And that's because I believe that every bit of life absolutely is entitled to their life. And I don't believe that no. I'm allowed mm -hmm. to go off and say, you're not going to live now, bye. Um, okay, so here's the, here's the, okay, so given that neither of you thinks it's uh, wrong to kill something if it doesn't suffer, I'm going to tell you what people think, what people say, is that, well, if it's, if it's wrong to murder a human, um, if it doesn't suffer, then why is it not okay to murder a, okay, now I have to take the vegan position, uh, as a, <laughs> a devil's advocate to see what you guys respond, what do you guys respond to, I have a response to this, but what do you respond to this? They say, um, this is double standard. This is it's, you're being specious because we have laws against killing humans, even if you kill them without suffering. So why do you think it's okay to kill animals even if they don't suffer? How would you respond to that? Well, you guys, I'm arguing against vegans. Okay, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm defending. Yeah, go on. Well, I'm not not fully vegan. I'm pro vegan, but yeah, pro vegan. Uh, you're a vegetarian but... that that aspires to be a vegan. Yeah, that's that's okay. a good description. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I I think uh, it, the part where um, you you gave me a really uh, simple 
yes no answer without nuance so the nuance has to come now and that's basically do we need to kill the animal for some reason so for example let, let's suppose that a, a lion or a tiger breaks free from a zoo and starts attacking people in the streets well it happens every now and then i think in that situation, it may be perfectly reasonable to kill it in order to prevent no, was, it from okay, causing okay, harm. No, no, no. Can, can I answer I was, your question? I was talking Arlen? about for food. Yeah, go ahead. Can, can I answer yeah, yeah. your question? I'm a speciesist. I do believe that humans have more value than animals sometimes. Again, I've been removed from the vegan community. Um, but so, so call me. Value to who? What's that? Value to other humans, though. I'm saying that that humans have value to more value to other humans than say an animal. Um, you but that's an argument, but that would be an argument for racism as well, though. No, it wouldn't. There's no. way more nuance to that. Yeah, <laughs> more nuance <laughs> to that. That's why we're talking about it. I'm not okay. you, that, to add the nuance if you need to. But okay? you're not gonna you're not gonna sit there and say, well, that's the same argument for racism. Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm talking about a species, that's race. I'm talking about a species. I believe yeah. that human beings, no matter their race, hold more. Uh, hold okay, more I have to take the vegan. I, okay, the vegan. A vegan would say here, right? <laughs> a, a vegan would well, say. Not all, not, not all vegans are created equal, Armin. <laughs> right. Like I'm trying. To, I'm trying to steal man the vegan. Okay. <laughs> the vegan yeah. here would say that. Okay, so if then I. Is it okay for us to consider humans that are not uh, contributing to the society as much as other humans? C can we consider them inferior and can we kill them for food? Is that okay? Because you're talking so, but but that was your measurement of being a species. You're saying okay. humans are va more valuable First because of, all, of the humans aren't supposed to eat other humans. There's an issue with with, with between humans and carnivorism. Okay, like. If if we start eating ourselves, we can get diseases like like mad cow disease, right? When That's the cows the are eating way out. Let's say humans eating humans would not cause disease. Let's okay, say if, if and then let's also say that it's it's not illegal to kill humans. Would humans eat other humans? Why the fuck not? Okay. Um, so we we can say all these things, Let's but. Say it, if it was not, if it were, if eating humans did not cause disease, should it be legal for us? to go out and kill the humans that are not contributing to the society and eat them. No, I, I draw my, my flat line at saying that I am a species and I'm saying that humans hold more value Why? than animals to other humans. Why? Because of our cognitive abilities. Yeah, mainly mainly that we have language exactly. and we can talk so to each other. Standard, so humans that don't have cognitive abilities, the Still human. human. Okay, yeah, but but your measurement was not human or not human. Your measurement, your reason for why humans are more valuable is because of their cognitive abilities. So the, if based on your own measurement, the humans that don't have higher cognitive abilities, should we go out and eat them if they if they didn't give us disease based no. on your measurement? So why not? Because they're still a human. Uh, see, you're contradicting yourself. But that's a we're all yeah. going in circles, so we <laughs> have to stop this. <laughs> no, but that's a circular argument. You see how it's a circular argument? Yes. Mm, yeah, that's okay. true. Yeah. Okay, uh, right, so okay. let me let can't, let can't turn to my steel man vegan myself then, because you guys, <laughs> <laughs> all right? My, the, I okay. My my measurement is not cognitive abilities, okay? Because we could eat children if that, we could ki eat infants if we if that was the measurement, okay? Don't we as atheists? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but um, the, reason w the reason why I think it's okay to kill animals and not humans is not because we're smarter or more intelligent or anything like that, uh, but because we're self-aware. And there, there, this is this the reason why I use that measurement is. No, li listen, listen before you judge, okay? <laughs> you cannot. You, it's not a crime to take something from somebody that they did not appreciate having to begin with. Of course, it is. No, if you do not, if you do not, well, you, if you steal from someone's property, you're, you're, that's that's theft. It's not even their property. That's a crime. If they, 
you don't understand. Let me let me make my point, Leon. Can I make my point? All right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> if you don't even it's not your property if you don't even know it exists. Right? So yeah, you're saying that pigs don't know they exist? <laughs> yeah, they don't. They're not self-aware. There are only a few uh, and there are only a few animals in the world that are self-aware. And that includes humans, sh- uh, chimpanzees, uh, dolphins, uh, elephants, uh, what else? I think crows. I might miss a few. I may miss a few, right? But this is our understanding that self awareness, in when it comes to um, this, is a very recent thing that has happened in in the um, uh, in the evolutionary biology, right? It's very recent. It's very rare, and a lot of people, when I say that, people are like, oh no, but pigs and dogs, and they're smart. I'm not talking about how smart you are. It doesn't being smart and being self-aware are completely different things. Self-aware, for example, a, a cat, right? A cat has no concept of itself. It has no idea that it exists. A cat has an understanding that its owner exists. It has an understanding that other cats exist. It has an understanding that its food exists. But he has no understanding of itself. It has no self-awareness. It does not know that it itself exists, right? Uh, how do you measure that? Okay. So how they measure that? I'm, I'm looking at this right <laughs> that's now. That's a huge. That's a huge topic, and you could go look into that and see what the scientific community has to say about that. But uh, as just of, really quick, self-awareness in animals is tested through mere self-recognition. That was the earliest methods, right? But oh, there's okay. a lot more to it than that, right? Like, okay. so. So I think that that's something I would need to study a little bit more because I'm not exactly yeah. sure. Um, but okay, especially but, if things have changed over time and we've started to realize that more animals are self-aware than maybe from previous tests. Yeah. Then that's something we'd have to argue. Uh, let me finish my point, and then I I'll, I'll also un- understand that yes, yeah, science changes, but we could also. But there's a lot of things. See. Um, our understanding of the world is based on the models that we un- that is given to us by the scientific community. And yes, the scientific community could be wrong, but we could only yeah. work with, with with the best models that we have, right? If we mm-hmm. always if we always want to talk about what could be and what could not be, then we can't eat anything at all because everything could be cancerous, everything <laughs> could be bad. Like yeah, yeah. But, but we have to just work with what we have, not what yeah. we could be. All right. And what, what we have right now, our best understanding is that a very, very few and a select group of animals are self-aware, right? Uh, and the thing is, uh, animals that are not self-aware appreciate not being in pain, right? They appreciate being happy, but they don't appreciate being alive. The reason why they don't appreciate being alive is because they don't even know that they're alive, right? So if, they, if an animal appreciates being in pain, not being in pain, then the moral thing to do is to make sure that they don't, they're not experiencing pain. But if, if an animal does not understand that it even it exists, taking its existence away from it is not taking anything away from it that it even knew it had. So, it's, for example, I think it should be a crime to separate a cow, a mother cow, from its children. Because we know a mother cow suffers when its children are taken away from it. Because the mother cow knows its children exist. It can see them, it experiences them, it has emotional attachments to them. But the, the mother cow, she doesn't even understand that she herself exists. She has no appreciation for her own existence. She has an appreciation for the existence of its children, but she has no appreciation for her existence of herself. It has no ego. It has no it. It has no self-awareness, right? So that's why I think taking a life of an animal in a humane way away from them, it's not taking away anything away from some so for an ent- from a conscious entity. It's conscious but not self-aware. It's not taking away anything from them that they were grateful from having. And that's why I don't think it should be considered a crime. Okay, so they they aren't themselves aware that that they exist, but they do form attachments to other things that they're aware exist, and you're taking that away from them by taking their life, in essence, right? That's a good point. But the thing is that if we weren't eating them, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be around to begin with, all right? So so in a sense, 
They, yeah, but they, that's not, that's they, not valid. But. No, wait. Let me, okay, but so so <laughs> you're saying like, but if we kill them, we're taking away potential ex- experiences that they could be having. Right, like potential happiness, for example, that they could be having, and we're killing them, and we're taking away their those experiences from them. But if the meat industry was not around, they wouldn't have any of those experiences to begin with. To you know, for here's here's a very interesting thing: the vegans and the vegetarians they speak on behalf of the cows and the chickens, but we nobody ever ask could ask the cows and the chickens themselves, right? It, we don't know if if they were if a- animals could talk, and if they could uh, speak for themselves, and they could if they could realize the situation. If if you ask if you give them the option, would you rather never exist at all, or exist for a while and be someone's food at some point? You don't know if they would not select the second option. They might have selected between not existing ever at all and existing for a while and then dying and being someone's food. I actually cho- choose option B. The thing is, without the meat industry, they would never exist. Yeah, but what and kind you of existence for them? Okay. What I, kind of existence do they have? No, that's the second. That's would okay. You? That's <laughs> a, you're, you're bringing out a different argument. You're talking, that's too different. You're talking about the conditions that they're living in. I'm talking solely, I'm talking specifically about whether we should kill them or not for food, right? But I'm it saying. It depends on the quality of their life. If their lives are miserable, are we have no different. right to create Wait, that life. Those are two different arguments. But Ali, you go on. No, no, based on what you're saying, though, you're saying so. We've because we've given this animal the ability to even exist through the meat industry, that it's okay for us to choose for them because we don't know if they would want A or B. It's okay for us to choose B. I, I severely disagree with that. But you are <laughs> choosing for them. You are choosing to A for them. Right. We're choosing to let them keep on having their experiences. Now, here is why vegans don't want the meat industry around anymore. Because you're absolutely right. Those animals exist because they are in demand. Let's take them out of demand. Let's get rid of the meat industry. So so you've actually just proven a vegan point perfectly. Wait, These no, animals you're... should not exist. Yes. But you're choosing for them. I so okay, are you... I yeah, but Aren't uh, no, you doing I'm the saying, same? <laughs> no, yeah, if you listen to what I'm saying, I say I'm saying we don't know. I didn't. I didn't. And then you pick. said, "So I choose." B. No, we are assuming. I didn't. Armin, Armin, in the in no, the animal industry. No, I didn't. I'm we... saying. I'm. I'm actually merely pointing out that there is another possibility. I didn't say that's a definite possibility. I'm saying. I'm saying. How is it that the vegans claim to know that the option they would have picked is it's A? Not, it's not I, that. We yeah, claim to but know. you do, But you can say that I'm doing the same thing because I'm the one that's saying that there's a, another possibility. I'm not saying that's a certain choice. I'm just pointing out another possibility. Well, I think this this whole thing. So we're not claiming to know what the animal wants. Okay. Right. What we're saying is we should not take anything away from them. So I think that many vegans would argue that the whole reason why they do choose to say meat is murder, stop killing these things, is because these animals should not exist. You're right. Cows and chickens and pigs in the way that they are right now, this is not the way that they would survive out in the wild. Okay? That's so, a naturalistic yes, if the meat industry were to go down, these animals would be killed. However, it would prevent killing more animals in the future because we don't know what they want. But these animals that are bred specifically for this purpose and kept in these conditions, all of this is together. We have to talk about it all together. The way that they're treated in the meat industry versus the way they're killed. I understand those are two different things, but they go hand in hand. Those are two separate things. And I think the fact that they're mixed together has caused a lot of animals a lot of suffering. The conversation about their conditions and the way they are killed is mixed with we shouldn't be killing animals, we shouldn't be eating animals. And mixing these two conversations together has caused more animal suffering. Because if we had focused this entire conversation on better conditions and more proper way of killing them, more animals would be saved a lot of suffering today. 
I think okay, there's but... no good argument for not killing animals. There are no good arguments for not eating animals and mixing animal suffering and the conditions they're living with those two arguments has caused, I think the vegan community and the vegetarian community has caused a lot of animal suffering for mixing these two arguments together. Well, let me let me come from a completely different angle, because so far you have not talked about the possibility of humans surviving without eating meat and animal products, because we can. So there's no necessity in uh, killing and exploiting and keeping animals at that all. That wasn't my argument at all. That's No, I, no, no, I but we haven't talked about that. Actually, and because so, here's again where I stand different from the vegan community. I do not believe that a vegan diet is the healthiest diet for every human body type. Do not. I do not believe that one bit. I believe that uh, us having to supplement vitamins, and I've been told this even by my own doctors, I had to go for a year on a completely different diet because um, I was gaining a lot of weight and I was getting outrageously sick on the vegan diet. People want to say the vegan diet is so healthy. Guys, there are things out well. there called diet cheesecake. Okay, and it's amazing, and it's got it's got more calories than you could consume in two days, and like one thing. So you can get outrageously fat on a vegan diet. You can get outrageously unhealthy on a vegan diet. We're talking about uh, preservatives and everything else. If you go to to Whole Foods and look for vegan crackers and everything else, you can get fat and you can get unhealthy. So saying that a vegan no, that's diet, true. No, no, no. So there. Again, not all vegan diets are created equally. So, uh, and as I said in in the in the beginning, uh, you, you health is not necessarily just going to improve by excluding animal products. You have to yeah. think very carefully and plan very carefully how you're going to adopt a a, a more plant based diet. That's true, mm -hmm. but the point is we don't need animal products. Uh, uh, to survive. At least most people don't. There, there, there are a few exceptions who, people who have rare conditions or or where it's very impractical to do so. And but I never I never use the argument that we need animals to survive as an argument f and against veganism. So that's, uh, that's not no, an no, argument no. I'm using. Okay, okay. But why do you insist on eating something you don't need? No, see, th okay, that's there's a lot of things people do that they don't need, all right? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to look at when I'm looking at the, you know, civilization and the problems that we're having and trying to solve them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you focus on what you can achieve rather than what would be, you know, why do we need to watch TV? Why do we mm -hmm. need to watch? What I, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, watching Game of Thrones tonight, right? Yeah, but, but that I don't need go at to. The cost I, of anyone. No, no, no. It co goes at the cost to me because I have so much shit to do, right? But I'm still <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I no, can but get you, more it's shit done. Time but, in which you can do this. So. No, I'm just saying. Uh, you know, and one animal that we have to take into account is the humans, right? Humans are uh, a certain yes. an a group of animals, and they behave in a certain way, right? And we need when we want to make big changes in society, we have to look at what makes this animal behave certain ways and not in certain other ways, right? Uh, and telling uh, the this group of animals that you don't need to do this, so don't do it, that's not going to get you that far, right? Um, yeah, it won't. Okay, but but telling them that hey, can we get behind reducing animal misery? That will get you much further than telling them stop eating meat, you fucking murderers. Right? That's not going <laughs> to get you that far. I can right. tell you that's not going to get you that far. But if you tell them like, hey, these animals are these animals are in pain, you still could enjoy your burger, you could still enjoy your chicken wings. But can we? Get behind. Can we vote for politicians that are going to pass bills that re that keeps them in better conditions? People are going to be like, yes, let's do that. I can tell mm -hmm. you that will get you a much more support than telling people to stop eating chicken wings. You could tell them that they don't need chicken wings. That's they don't need to eat it. So stop eating it. That will not get you that far. Correct. And right. that was one of the issues that I had sure. uh, or that people had with me. <laughs> was because mm -hmm. I said, it's a great thing. Look, if people just want to reduce, and it, we're talking about healthy diet choices, having a diet of just meat all the time, that's also not healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So 
All I wanted to say was if somebody says, hey, you know what? I used to have five hamburgers a week and now I'm down to two. Let's cheer that. As the vegan society, Mm -hmm. let's cheer that. If someone says, hey, you know what? I've cut beef completely out of my diet. Cheer it. Um, They don't want to eat cheese anymore or or they've you know, gotten rid of everything except cheese. Let's cheer that. But no, <laughs> I'm the devil for saying these are good things. Yeah. Um, and I also want to point out that there are a lot of us vegans who shut up about who we are, um, but also do in the same time go out and do exactly what Arm's talking about. Try to reduce the suffering of animals. We are never, I don't think ever going to get everyone to change their mind. My personal preference, I just don't like flesh in my mouth right? Like I, I love animals very much. I love dogs the same way I love pigs, the same way I love cows. I've raised two pigs in my lifetime, guys. I, I'm in Texas. So <laughs> <laughs> I've raised these animals and, and I eat, sent them off for slaughter. Did you eat them? Oh, okay, it was you sent them off, you sent them yes. off for slaughter? Well, yes, I was in FFA, oh. which is Future Farmers of America when I was in high school. I'll post pictures for you later. But um, yeah. <laughs> this I, is before I, you were a vegan? Uh, I was still a vegetarian, but yes, before I was a vegan. Mm. Um, and so I did. I raised animals in this program to send off to slaughter. Uh, so I I get that people are going to continue. To okay, continue. that's actually that's actually a very good example. Did when you when you raise those pig, uh, little piglets, did they enjoy their life? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I would feed them grapes. Uh, one of my wow. pigs. Tex, okay. Looked forward to me bringing him special snacks every day. Okay, and he okay. Recognized if me. if that if those pigs could talk, right, and they had the, uh, but they were raised to go get slaughtered, weren't they? <sighs> I treated Tex like he was my puppy. Right, but, yes, but they I had a really good life, and they person. eventually. But the whole point of it was to eventually for them to go get slaughtered, right? So that it, that's a great example. Do you think that that those two pigs? If they had the choice, if they could speak, just guess. I know we cannot be sure, right? But if they said, if you like, for you know, they had the choice with uh, not experiencing that life at all, ever, and just not being born ever. But between that and the option that they were raised by you and they enjoyed grapes and they had a really good life, but then they eventually they became slaughtered and they become someone's food. If they had the options between those two, which one do you think they would pick? Never existing or experiencing being raised by you and then eventually being slaughtered? Which one would you think they pick? Actually, I think they'd pick C, which is to continue no. to get there. There is no C. <laughs> and live their life. And but die Ali, and- realistically, there is no C. They would not, like, without the, beef, without the meat industry, there wouldn't, be, there wouldn't be that many, all right? There would be still cows and piglets, but many of them wouldn't be around. It would not make any economical sense for any all of, for m- most of them to be around. Okay, so no. yeah, I understand that they would probably okay. that I understand that if there was a C, they would probably pick your option C. But given option A and B alone, which one do you think they would pick? Probably to never exist. Really? Okay. That's what I, I would. I would probably really. So you would go with never existing over having a uh, really good I, life I think... and then dying. I mean, I mean he we... had a really good life for like four months. Okay, like, uh, and the 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 thing is, you, is that's better than him, nothing. Him... That better than not exist. Having a good life for four months is better than not having any life at all. Okay, here's the deal, though. When I sent him off to slaughter, I didn't know a few things. I didn't know which slaughterhouse he was going to, and I've been to a few slaughterhouses. Okay, so I am pro oh. some slaughterhouses and anti other slaughterhouses. Oh. Can you tell us about the difference? Oh, absolutely. So there are some places, like remember that bolt you were talking about? Um, right. Mm-hmm. That gets shot into the, the skull. So we went to a slaughterhouse with my FFA team in high school uh, to watch the entire process from cows living out in a field. They weren't locked up in cages. They weren't forced to eat from troughs. These were free-range cows. Um, and how they would get them into their walking pen. Okay? And then they would be bolted, boom, right after another, right? Their bodies moved into the conveyors. Uh, So we got to see them from from the beginning, from them just walking in a field to being packaged um, in this place. So it was was actually very interesting. But this was, of course, a small place, not a mass producer. 
Um, and, and people who are small time that, that allow the free range and there's no abuse and you can see that they are killed instantly. Uh, I'm actually pro those places. And I would hope that people who eat meat would yeah. actually support those places. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then of course we've seen the places where animals are tied to a cage, uh, forced to eat, uh, with bars going down behind their necks and everything. Those are terrible places, but those uh, are even when it comes to supporting that, I think it would be in, like, honestly, uh, if you want to make change from a, on an individual basis, I think the major change should be just passing laws to make it mandatory not to mistreat animals like that. Even when it comes to the climate change arguments, this is the, the this is the problem I have. Like people are like, oh, I bike to work instead of driving a car, for example, right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, the amount of time that you're wasting, if you donated that money to uh, offshooting your carbon emissions, that would have done a lot more. Like if you were if you drove a car to work or took a taxi or whatever, uh, and that you were doing a little bit more work, one hour more worth of work, and spend that money to give to some organization to offshoot your carbon emissions, it would have done a lot more than the car, the amount of carbon emissions that you did from your car, right? And I think, like, when even when it comes to Do you know how expensive a car is and to maintain it, no, the tax. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. That's again. You're shifting between arguments. That's a financial, personal finance decision. I'm talking about specifically if you drove a taxi or a, or a bus or whatever. I think if you saved some money and just donated that to, uh, I'm just saying. Like for example, like people are talking. Yeah, about a lot of ta- your arguments are not realistic, Armin. Taxis are fucking expensive, and and bikes are very cheap to maintain, very cheap to buy. And if you're if you're cl- live relatively close to work, like within uh, ten kilometers or something, then then a bike is a very good way of keeping you healthy, so you don't have to go to the gym or whatever. Yeah, and it's very maintained, very very, very cheap. Arguments you're mixing in different arguments. So you, you have to look at all the the entire perspective, Armin. You you can't just detach it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but you, when you try to make a point, you come up with a simple model and then you add other things to it. Like, for example, when you're trying to teach something in physics, right? When mm-hmm. you're trying to, like, when you try to ca- calculate how much this box will move if you a- apply this much force to it, right? You, you assume there's no friction between the box uh, and, and the surface that it's on. But obviously, that's not realistic. There's always going to be friction, right? But you add, but f- at first, you add, teach it. Uh, without friction, then you add friction. But for the sake of making a point about how things work, you co- come up with a model that doesn't have any friction. Okay. Try to reduce the elements to make a point, and then you could add on other elements to it. But go on, Ali, sorry. In, in the Western, I guess, like in, in America, for instance, I have friends who still own three cars, um, but think that they're saving the environment uh, a billion you know, percent by on Mondays riding their bike to work. Um, mm-hmm. so I think in, in those cases, that might be where, what Armin's talking about, you know, donating your carbon offsets would be better <laughs> than holding on to your three cars and just one day at least biking to work. Maybe I should, I should, uh, um, explain that I live in a very small and, uh, densely populated country like the Netherlands. It's 17 million people on, uh, on a, a space that is as large as Los, Los uh, Angeles County. Right. So we're, I mean, yeah. we're I'm pretty sure. Small. Okay, I'm pretty so, sure there so are many. So we can all examples. cycle to work, basically. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. <laughs> okay, I'm like, if you add health, if you add up the enjoy the quality of life, if you add up being close to work, I'm pretty sure b- biking is better. I was just trying to make a different point. <laughs> the point, okay. for example, I'm trying to make with regards to climate change, it would be more effective to just argue for a carbon uh, tax, right? Mm-hmm. Just add a ca- anything that produces more carbon emissions. Just tax it for those carbon emissions. Then, the, then meat will become more expensive. You, instead of conv- instead of just telling people to less, eat less meat, you're influencing people's behavior by making things that produce more carbon more expensive, right? You influence people's behavior like that, you, and then it will be exactly proportional to the amount of carbon emissions that it's already having, because you're just ta- taxing carbon emissions. What? That's a very. What are you? What's your problem? Uh, I, I don't understand. How, how is how is moving towards it a more plant-based that. diet more polluting yeah. to the environment? I don't understand. If or is you, that not your argument? What? 
I'm it's, just it's saying your argument if, that's... If, your, if your argument is yeah. you know less carbon emissions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then the what we should be pushing for is taxing carbon emissions. Yeah. If if you, ta- if you tax carbon emissions, then you're o- already going to influence people's behavior. People are going to re- reduce their consumptions of everything, not just meat, everything that causes more carbon emissions on a mass scale more effectively than going telling people that don't eat meat because it has it produces more carbon. Just tax whatever, not just carbon emissions, anything that causes harm, you mm-hmm. tax it. Anything that it causes benefits to society, you subsidize it. Positive mm-hmm. externalities, you subsidize. Negative externalities, you tax. And that way, you're influencing people's behavior based on the price that it will get. The tax will influence people's price, the prices of the products they're consuming, and it therefore influences their behavior. And you take that tax that you're putting to, uh, uh, um, that you're getting from carbon emissions, uh, and you put it towards projects that offshoots carbon emissions problem solved uh, yeah but, but but i think that's a very much more productive way of influencing people's behavior than telling people not to have chicken wings ali you wanted to add mm-hmm. something here i uh, know okay wait agree with me i win <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think there's a game changer which we haven't talked about yet, okay. but uh, I think this is one we can all get behind. So, uh, and it is cultured meat, lab-grown meat, um, as you probably yes. have. Uh, read, I think we all support about. that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I very much support that, and I think it will be a game changer. The only problem is it's not on the market yet, so we we'll have. That's to why we're having this uh, our, our discussion right now because I think five years from now this discussion will die because we're gonna have. I think so. Yes. Lab, we're gonna have yeah. lab grown meat everywhere in every market, and it's going to be uh, eat cheaper to produce. It's going to be so much tastier. It's going to have the exact amount of fat and exact amount of juice. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be. We're going to have farms of meats. We're gonna lab grown meats. So it's going to be amazing. Yes, and I'm actually well. I'm not usually proud of my country, but we are sort of leading the uh, the the way to to cultured meat. We we've, we've spent a lot of uh, 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 academic uh, scientific research on developing yeah. cultured meat, and uh, there are several startups in the Netherlands and also in the United States and several other countries. Yeah, but we will we will be amongst the first to introduce this in the, in the coming years. So um, and people will will definitely be eating this. There have been uh, market research uh, uh, showing that m- many people will will want to eat this. Mm. Um, and um, there yeah, are also imagine imagine how much how much uh, uh, you know it's going to become cheaper. It's going to imagine how much farmland we're going to because a lot of the f- farmland that is being wasted um, is used to feed other animals, right? Yes. And yes. I think like this is going to revolutionize the entire planet. This, I, I can't wait. I hope I it's think happening. that every vegan should be looking forward to this um, yeah. for that exact purpose. Right. We're just yes. not going to So this is going, it's, it's already a big divide within the vegan community. Some is it? vegans are pro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some oh, are yeah. pro culture myths and others are anti because it, it still involves uh, exploitation of animals because you're taking their stem cells, but I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Wait, wait. <laughs> don't have brains, so what the problem do they have with the stem cells? Because you have to take a living specimen to get its cells to create this. So yes. they sound but, like Christians now. Yes, but but right. if you look at the See, scale of this, um, if if you have, if we regulate this uh, this industry perfectly, suppose we could regulate it perfectly, you need only 150 cows for the entire earth to feed the entire earth with with uh, with uh, beef. Only 150 cows would be enough to to get all the stem cells you need. So it would be a massive massive uh, 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 reduction of harm to animals. Yes. But some vegans are so radical that those 150 cows are still too much. Now, I, I, I really don't understand that. You've got your priorities wrong. Right. So, uh, 
<laughs> so right. um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to create stem cells with that animals at, at some point as well. Yeah, uh, so that that's quite quite possible that you can just uh, continue developing that. Can we switch to tactics now? Can we? I think yeah. this is going to be not a debate anymore because I think now we're going to move into something that we could all uh, we all all here agree <laughs> on. Uh, but to 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 give it a taste of what some of these tactics look like. Yeah. Uh, from the vegan community. Uh, Ali, can you g- run through what happened to you for us? Yeah, so I started becoming very vocal. Um, I Let me start before that. Uh, I, I loved veganism, surrounded myself with vegan friends. I got really involved in Facebook communities on veganism. Um, I was invited into a lot of seeker groups, actually, that would even like uh, that were dedicated to finding organizations um, that used their money to go hunt animals overseas um, and exploit people in order to kill an elephant. So uh, we it was it, these were like target groups that were like actually you know deploying vegans to go comment on these people and, and kind of you know like take down the businesses. I didn't do that. Okay, I actually did do it once, but the guy reached out to me and he was really nice. So I was like, I'm so sorry this is happening. And I, I took it down. Um, so, so I didn't do it after that. Uh, I realized how, how crazy it was becoming. Like I realized how crazy it was. And then I started seeing all these arguments against uh, medications. I started seeing arguments about parents who aren't bringing up their babies as vegan. I started seeing... Um, all this stuff that I said, you know, scientifically, this just doesn't make sense. Scientifically, we should be pro-vax. Um, they're anti-vaxxers. They're wrong. Uh, <laughs> they're pro-vaxxers. Scientifically, it's just right. Um, I spoke to two different doctors about my daughter and what kind of diet I should be feeding her. Um, and both of them adamantly told me, do not raise your baby on a vegan diet. And uh, I was I was trashed for that in a lot of the communities, um, you know, because it, it actually what ended up happening was I had this app on my phone. It's like a Target app. And like you can scan it to like see if you can get a discount on stuff. And one of it was meat. And my vegan friend brought it to me and she said, I just saw this on your Target app. And I was like, I didn't even know you could see that stuff. I was like, but I buy that meat for my daughter. And she was like, how fucking dare you? And I lost a friend over that, right? So things started declining and started declining. I started back off and backing off um eventually i did get doxxed uh and of course i went to my vegan friends to you know vent about things and how terrible my life was at that moment um and they used that information they ended up gaining access to my address used that information invited me to a skype debate um to which i gladly agreed you know we're vegan friends let's do this um and then in there they (laughs) basically told me we've got your address um, we, you know, we're going to take you down. Like what you're doing, you have a platform of 2 million people. They, they knew that I was involved with Atheist Republic. You have a platform where you can be doing good for our cause and you're not. Um, you know, we're tired of the jokes that get posted. You know, like I had nothing to do with that. I thought they were Wait, funny. so they were going after you because you're the CEO of Atheist Republic and Atheist Republic has 2 million followers and they said that you should be using your platform for promoting. Yeah. Okay. Mm, it, was, okay. it was just an added on thing. Like no one had ever brought me that okay. before other than they were upset about certain posts that I was like, then go there and say you're upset about it. Go there and fight, you know? <laughs> um, but anyway, they were like, you know, you're having this, you're, you're buying meat, you're telling people that we should be exploiting animals for medical purposes, which again, like if you're talking about vaccinations and medicines, yes, I, I am mm. telling you that we should be exploiting animals yeah. for the purposes yeah. um, i agree if, with that yeah. yes yeah, both of you okay yeah yeah, yeah. so uh yeah, yeah. vaccination so is very you important you know we've got your address you know uh we know we, we've got pictures of your kids from your facebook uh we can track down because we know where you're at where they go to school um and and i immediately closed down but then i started getting messages just it seemed like those secret groups that i was in <laughs> that targeted those hunters and stuff just mm-hmm. all turned towards me um i was getting messages saying you know if you think animals should be exploited maybe we should exploit you let's rape you let's milk you until you die let's rip your children with me while you're at it let's do the same thing to your daughter i mean i'm about to start crying again i'm so sorry um it's horrible that was terrifying and um, 
I would get messages saying like, I'm sending you a package, hope you enjoy it from people who are saying this stuff. So it got to the point where I was so paranoid and I was so scared that my, I didn't want my kids near my windows. Um, the police had to get involved. Um, it was, I, I couldn't just go to the store. Like I couldn't just go grocery shopping because I didn't know who was in the car behind me. I didn't know who was following me. I didn't know, um, you know, I had to pull my kids out of school um, because I was terrified that they said that they could figure out what school they went to based on my district. Um, and this was just, I mean, the targeted attack was so vicious mentally that I ended up breaking. And I just ended up breaking. Not only was I getting, you know, this already from the atheist community who was mad about I don't know, like some Trump post or something, but, um, and that's what started the doxing. But, uh, now, now I'm getting this from my friends, my friends who I confided a lot of information in because we are friends all because of some stances that we didn't agree with. It's, it's horrible what happened to you. And, and I, I completely reject this kind of, of vegan activism. It's, it's, it's just, it's so tribal uh, it, it goes against a lot of their own principles, but not harming others. Uh, because, you know, humans are also animals, so you should also be, right. be protecting humans. It, it's, it's so ridiculous. There, there, there are a lot, there's a lot of, um, how do you call it, M misanthropy going on within veganism. They hate humans. So I, 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 I just can't understand it and I, I completely oppose that and I'm, I'm so horrible what, what, what happened to you and uh, yeah are you safe now Ali I had to move um, I had to move and I still have a friend who's in the, the police department here where I live now who just comes by to hang out with me every now and then just because just because I moved like I still I don't think anyone really understands how much you take safety for granted Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when you're able to just lock your door and go to sleep at night, I was unable to do that. I still have sleep issues. Um, because when you're sleeping, you're the most vulnerable and mm -hmm. having my safety taken away from me the way it was ruined me for a little while. I'm still coming back. I'm, you know, still getting stronger every day there. They didn't succeed. They didn't shut me up. I'm here talking now. Um, but people take their safety for granted. Uh, and while I probably am safe now, in my mind, it's I'm still paranoid. In my mind, I'm still scared. I still think that I'm going to be attacked. Uh, the, uh, the, the bizarre thing about all of this is that I think this, this kind of behavior is the reason why um, not only humans like Ali are suffering, but also because why more animals are suffering now. Because of the ridiculous nature of vegan activism, um, even the sane ones have been uh, dismissed as just a bunch of crazy people, right? Uh, and well, I that's, think because, that's because, somewhat changing now, but, okay. but yeah. No, but it, I'm just it, saying that because of these kind of practices, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have abandoned like or or refuse to even listen to what veganism vegans have to say yeah and because of and not only that even people that are not vegan activists are just animal rights activists just basic animal rights activists are just be like oh you're one of those gut people right and because of this a lot of animal rights activism is completely dismissed and more animals i think is suffering because of the actions of people that are pretending that they want to and uh, pr uh, de to defend animals. And again, this is very interesting. This is very similar to the far left to me, because uh, I think these people are, are just pretending that they care about animals. These are just people that want to be relevant. These are people that want to feel like they are. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't think I don't think that's that's true. I think okay. they do care about animals, but they are so fanatical about it that they forget about people who are also animals. <laughs> and I, uh, um, that's that's kind of speciesist in its own way. That they they're so exactly. misanthropic that that uh, they don't care enough about humans. 
in in their quest to protect Look, animals. And I think everyone is speciesist on some level or another. Okay, why do you have a dog and not a pig? Why do you have a <laughs> cat and not a horse, right? And you can say yeah, space yeah. issues or whatever, but it's it's preference. People prefer things. Uh, so when I said earlier that I'm speciesist and I put humans above everything else, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We all draw the line somewhere. What are you going to put on yeah. your plate? Some people say anything, but seriously, at the end of the day, are you going to have a burger or are you going to have octopus? You know, it's depending on where you live. Um, (laughs) Depending on where you live and who's preparing it. Um, But, you know, we we have preferences. We have preferences to what we enjoy. Um, And the same thing goes for species. And I think that the vegans that push humans away because they love animals so much, I, I... uh, would also agree with Armin here that it, it's not their love for animals that's doing this. It's their drive for um, winning. It's their drive for winning that pushes them so far. They have a stance on something. They love animals, but what really drives them is winning. They want things mm-hmm. their way. And they and will being stop special. nothing to get it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, by the way, this, this is another thing that um, where I differ f- from a lot of vegans is that I would not call myself an animal lover as such because you know uh, I, I, I'm not not sp- very uh, uh, abnormally interested in animals and uh, you know uh, cuddling animals and such not really you know I, I might like uh, like to watch you uh, watch uh, an animal or but I'm, I'm not interested in getting a pet or something i just don't want them to be harmed uh, uh needlessly if i can prevent that harm i can if, if, if i can do something a mm. contribution to preventing harm I'm, I, I'm i'm happy to do that but i'm not uh, abnormally yeah, I, an animal lover or something i mean my main my my main uh, act uh, desire for activism is to just to reduce misery Okay. Yeah. yeah. And my, for, mine you know, too. Mine too. Right, so and misery for anything that could experience misery, right? Human, animal. In fact, some people are suggesting that some animals could actually experience more pain, like you know, pigs and stuff, right? Um, so it's okay. not for me. It's not about um, human versus pigs or anything. I think misery. I'm just anti-misery, right? And mm-hmm. I just think that uh, mm-hmm. killing animals in a human way it does not cause misery. But the conditions that they're kept in does cause misery. Uh, the way they are killed does cause misery. Um, if mothers uh, are separated from their kids, that does cause misery. And I think that's if if our focus is on reducing misery, that's where the p- attention should be, not mm-hmm. on not eating meat. Um, that's what yeah. I think. I might. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, and and that's also a distinction I think we should make that eating meat as such is not wrong. It's just how is the meat obtained, and so if we do that uh, by right. growing it in a lab, I, I'm fine with that. If no no animals are harmed uh, in that, fine. Yeah. It, it it just matters how how did was we should also make technology for animals to be able to speak um, for themselves. <laughs> that would I, be nice. I, I, <laughs> I would I I bet you they would be pro the meat industry because that's the only reason why. <laughs> Because that's the only reason why they're alive. <laughs> no, I let's bet. Talk about that, by the way. How crazy <laughs> I feel it is to put your dog or cat on a vegan diet. I'm oh, also fuck. anti that. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm I'm anti that, but a lot a lot of people uh, do. They have their dogs. They say dogs don't need meat, um, and they have them on vegan diets. I think it's cruel. I, I don't well, think well, that's fair. If, if you have a specialized diet, especially for, for cats, dogs are better at this, but cats do need some kind of meat, especially if you're this really specialized. This is so bizarre to me. Like, <laughs> it, it, like this, these are the things that these people are talking about. If these attentions were were put into trying to make like legal, like trying to just get people to write letters to their congressmen to put like pressure on McDonald's to only buy meat from places where they treat animals in a, in a better way if yes of all this obsession from like oh i'm gonna give my dog this meat or that that this diet or that diet if it was somewhere else so many more animals would have been saved from misery you know half just- of being a vegan is jacking off verbally <laughs> 
<laughs> to other people to show them how cool you are and how vegan you are. That's half of veganism. Yeah. I I I really I I never when I decided to try veganism, I um didn't want to be like that. I didn't want to be arrogant, like look at me, I'm superior. I I I didn't want that. I wanted to maintain the same relationships so, with people. Let me let me um, give and, yeah. Go on, sorry, you finish. I don't want to. Yeah, so I I I wanted to to look like I, I'm still the same same person. Uh, I just make a different choice when it comes to um, animal products. For example, and I'm just trying to, and and I invite you to join me into changing mm. your diet, perhaps, and changing certain behaviors, if you want. But I'm not going to force it on you because I know that is what pushed me away from veganism before I was convinced. So, he, but here's here's what I say: a person that uh, has uh, only a plant-based diet, only, mm. right? Verse, but and that's all they do for animals. Versus a person that has a meat-based diet, but also donates to animal rights activism or tries to offshoot its animal consumption with a with something that actually saves animals at the same time. Maybe more than what he or uh, she could have accomplished herself by not eating animal i would yes. think that second person is doing more for animals yes. than the person that is just not eating animals i think so, I agree. so yeah. at, at this point i i wonder have you ever heard about uh, effective altruism ever heard of that no but that sounds something i could get behind yes so yeah. this is basically the movement that uh science-based vegans uh, uh try to try to model their activism after oh. um it's it's a movement that has also been stimulated by Peter Singer, one of the most uh, yes. world famous uh, vegan activists. Uh, he is very much science based, and this effective altruism is looking at the most effective ways what of doing vegan off? activism and and other kinds of uh, altruistic activism. And so uh, they don't focus on things that that push people away, but that makes them. Uh, actually change their behavior in a, in a most af- cost effective uh, right. way that does the most good. And uh, so it's not important uh, it, it, for them. It's not a dogma that you need to go vegan. If mm-hmm. you do other kinds of activism, for example, you donate to uh, yeah, an animal rights organization or to a, um, um, a cultured meat startup. There's lots mm-hmm. of things you can do without completely going vegan actually, and still doing uh, lots of things for for animals yeah by the way this is actually it's very interesting that you said that uh, because you know this is also the reason why sam harris stopped being a vegan um he he first noted both both the things that both of you mentioned because he first also no, no, started noticing some health issues after he became a vegan so he well thought, he, he was a vegetarian for a few years a vegetarian and, uh, i think yeah. yeah but also he also felt like this is more like a cult rather than something that is altruistic because he was like he if he he was thinking like if he's invited to a party and the meat is already on the table if he eats that uh, that shouldn't be a problem because the meat is already there uh, and he's not causing any more animals to be killed by eating that but the thing is that the the people that were telling him not to eat meat they were like, no, you shouldn't even eat that, and he couldn't. He didn't see why would you? Why couldn't I eat that? That's already there. It's at right. a party. Like that's, well, it, that's a huge <laughs> argument. Like like uh, whenever I go out, if somebody makes me something and it, uh, you know, bread and they used butter uh, or they used milk or something, they already made that for me. Like so, I the human is more important than the butter and that thing. And I'm going to thank them. And if they want to share it with me right then and there, I'll share it with them. Um, But it's not something that I personally would normally choose. Uh, It's just I feel that human feeling is more important than, you know, having a little bit of butter and bread at that time. So so So, I'm also very pragmatic in how I interact with with people. I especially didn't want to bother my my family and closest friends with this that whenever i'm over for dinner that they have to you know cook or bake something separately for me i I, if it's without meat and without fish i'm fine i i I don't want to force my lifestyle upon them and so we found a balance there 
Yeah. Yeah. But, and I think okay. that's really awesome. Leon. Like I, I don't even tell people my eating choices. Um, because I, I just, disagree I with you guys that's... here because I think if vegan, <laughs> because I think if veganism, if vegans did have good points, which they don't, uh, I wouldn't, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be against them trying to change the world. Uh, because if they, I mean, this is why I support, I disagree with Muslims and Christians, but I, but I support their rights to, to advocate for them because why wouldn't they, if they think this is the right way to uh, best for everybody you advocate what you believe in uh, I'm not I do, I'm not against if vegans were using proper tactics to promote their ideas I w- uh, or making you know requests from other people I wouldn't be against that the point the, the the thing I am against them is first of all they don't have any good points and second of all they have they're using wrong tactics but I'm not against advocacy or telling people that you're vegan everywhere you go. A lot of people make fun <laughs> of vegans because of that. I'm not against that. I think you should be able to promote your ideas wherever you go. Okay, I saying it is one thing, but the connotation that comes behind it and what typically what people typically do after saying they're a vegan is I'm a vegan and they start pointing out every ways that you're not a vegan. Um, yeah. So that's that's the problem. And you can see this in threads, <laughs> right, on Facebook. Uh, if you have vegan friends in real life, typically that's the way we act. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't do that. I don't do that. Um, yeah, it's okay. You don't do that. I'm not, uh, but I'm not against that specifically. Uh, if, I think that it pushes people away from the movement. I do. Yes. I think that when you're what, constantly criticizing other people and what they put it, you know, my body, my choice. You right? should, you, so you should, I yeah. choose, <laughs> I choose to eat what I want to eat. You choose to eat what you want to eat. Yeah. However, you know, after today, after the discussion we've had today, how I'm going to start approaching people. Cause before I just leave people alone, Hey, you have the right to eat whatever you want today. I would like to start asking people, Hey, do you mind buying free range, uh, products from someplace? Let's help reduce the suffering of animals together. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a positive change that all of us can yeah. start making today in how we interact with people. Yeah. Hmm. I don't so, think so I, changing, I also have this making personal changes move as the needle that much, but go on. Yeah. yeah so I, I, I also, I favor saying that, well, this is my choice and uh, I've chosen it for this and this reason and this and this argument. Uh, and I invite you to join me, but you free not to. That's basically my approach. And I don't, don't that people how I, I don't tell people how they're wrong. Um, uh, I, 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 I choose a positive uh, approach. Armin, you see that goes without saying. Uh, Leon and I are unicorns in the vegan community. So <laughs> don't sit there and say this goes without saying. But it's contra- <laughs> it's, I don't think it's contradictory to, you know, like you could tell, pe- if you tell people why they're wrong, it's not the same as you forcing them to make a decision. Okay, make a but different who, decision. Who goes around just saying, hey, you're wrong. Here's some factual evidence to back that up. What they, what, okay. Yeah, I do that too, by the way. <laughs> I'm talking about the vegan community here. Talking, I, show me an example, please, that you guys have seen in vegan threads where vegans are talking to meat eaters and they're like, hey, guy, let's look at this. And it doesn't end up resorting to, fuck you, your mom's a cow, or <laughs> whatever, you know? Show isn't that, me isn't that a vegan food. compliment? Your, your mom's a cow? Okay, but uh, I I do have to say that my approach to uh, uh, veganism is different than my approach to atheism. With atheism, I'm much more uh, confrontational. Um, For some reason, people find their dietary choices much more personal, and they 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 get much more defensive when you you say, "Well, I think uh, the animal industry is wrong." Bacon is more holy than Islamic Christianity. I think religion is wrong because religion bashing is much more fashionable i think um and but this are... but i'm trying to be consistent because i don't hold back on religion bashing mm-hmm. i don't see any issue with people constantly criticizing people that they disagree with the, the only thing i would say is that when i bash religion i owe I'm either doing it within an environment where people get to choose to come to to get the religion bashing. Like I, the religion bashing is never come, is never forced on anybody. Like anybody, it's only in environments where people could complete mute me, block me, 
Um, it's never in uh, environments where you're where where it's not welcome, right? Like you don't. If you go, if I'm invited to a place, I make sure that I say things that is acceptable in the place that the host allows. You know what I mean? But when I'm on my own platform, I get to say whatever I want. So a lot of people think like you're forcing religion bashing on people. Like no, if anybody is exposed to our religion bashing, uh, they looked us up. They found us. They are. They are. They're, right. they're coming. You're not running into churches screaming, "There is no God." Right. Right. <laughs> Unless they invite me, then I will be happy. To right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Bashing religion, it's okay if it's not forced on anybody. And I think if you criticize religion constantly, that's not the same as forcing people to be exposed to your content. So I think vegans should be able to bash meat eaters and i don't as much as they want well meat, meat eating but not the like, way there's, there's obviously not the between... way that it was forced like we have a great example on how it could be forced on somebody like ali for example mentioned yeah right? That's an example of forcing it on somebody. But I think it's okay if you're doing it on your own platform, if you're if you're doing it in places where you're invited. If your if your criticism is not forced upon anybody, you should be able to criticize other people as much as you want. And that's not the same as forcing anybody to do anything. Telling people yes. they're wrong is not the same as you forcing them to live a certain way. What what was done to Ali is an example of forcing people to try to force people to live a certain way, not yeah. just telling people they're wrong. It's okay to tell people you're wrong, even if you're wrong in what you're when when you're saying that. You know, you, yeah, you, that's my point. But I have a question for you, Leon. Yes. If you, you do you like um, the, um, I know this is irrelevant to morality of it, but it makes sense when I when after when I ask my question. Do you, do you like meat? Uh. <laughs> Uh, yes and no. I, I should qualify that. So I used to like meat, but um, so for uh, the sake of the argument, let's say yeah. you like meat, you enjoy eating meat, right? Yeah. But okay. you're ethically opposed to it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were invited to a party where they were everything was already cooked and ready, and you eat and everything that was not consumed would be gone to waste. Mm -hmm. Like it's not going to encourage more meeting of eat um, of meat if you consume the meat and, and you enjoy eating the meat. Would you in this party? Would you consume the meat? I used to do that for a few months. So this is this is stance is called freeganism. <laughs> it's a real it's a real word freeganism. So basically, it says that everything that el would otherwise be discarded will be thrown away. You're you're okay to eat that even if it's meat. Um, but oh, that makes uh, sense. why did you stop? So well because. Uh, it basically shows that whoever is organizing this party is that, oh, I don't have to worry because Armin or Leon or Ali will still uh, eat the meat uh, even when there's too much left. <laughs> so you're, you're basically uh, the, the vacuum cleaner. So, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, what if you see... But, but, what but if that you doesn't what motivate if people to buy less meat the next time because they know nobody's going to consume it. So okay, okay. Would you based on the experience of having too much meat, okay. they'll, they'll we, buy less next time so you, you you're sending a, a signal would you if you were invited to a party like that would you just secretly when no one else is looking eat a burger no no but okay but no but, but you're not sending the signal if you just eat secretly <laughs> no no but that's because um my my emotions changed mm -hmm. like uh i i i, I I'll be honest like i went into uh, trying veganism completely on a rational uh, evaluation of the arguments and the evidence. Mm -hmm. It's only later when I got more emotional empathy with animals to the point where I really don't want to eat meat anymore because I feel bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just really don't want to participate in it anymore. But so, I, yeah. I get it. By the way, I'm getting right. really hungry from some steaks right now. So, after this. <laughs> <laughs> after okay, we're do that so much after, <laughs> after the conversation that's fine but, uh, <laughs> no, this like, is actually making me hungry I don't know why but go on okay. yeah you, we're drinking something uh, Ali right. and I but anyway um, so that, that this is by the way a side point uh, some people are ask me is it fine if, if, if I order some meat or if we're going to eat meat somewhere and I will say yeah fine you know that's your choice um uh, I've gotten used to it now, but there has been a time where I was 
really you know you gotta you gotta be the that. change you want right be i really don't understand Let people the... see what you do if they like it they can follow you if not yeah. fine but i never just... i never understood when people say that's your choice you're free to do what you want because, because we because we want to be friendly to people and yeah, but but as opposed away. to what? As opposed to no, I'm going to put a gun on your head and force you not to eat meat. Like, of course they're free to. Of course it's their choice. Of course, like who's like? What is that a counter to when you say it's a counter it's to choice? them them checking your feelings and then you responding, letting them know that your feelings won't be hurt because you understand that it's their choice. Yeah, they're but it's also their but it's also their choice. Meat, to... If I order meat, is this going to offend you? You say, no, it's not going to offend me because I understand you're an adult and you can make your own choices. So saying it back to somebody is just a consideration. It's just polite. Yeah, yeah. it's polite, but I just wish people wouldn't use the, the, the phrase, it's your, like, okay, you, no, I wouldn't be offended. This makes sense, but it's your choice doesn't make sense to me because it will also be their choice to not buy meat. You know what I mean? Of course it's yeah. their choice. Like yeah. who's who's cho whose choice is it if it's not their choice? Right, like, but we're not just like, randomly walking up to people being like, "Hey, sir, buy that steak. It's but, your choice." That would no, be no, but, but I'm just saying that even, But I'm just saying even if you said to them that, "No, don't buy meat. I would be offended if you buy meat." That statement is still not forcing them not to buy meat. So Given no, that that statement is not forcing them not to buy meat, it's just a request. Then it doesn't make sense to me to when you say no. But it's 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 hostile attitude to your I friends. I you don't hostile, want that because that it estranges them from you, and you don't want that because they'll have less sympathy for your cause, it's and you're being counterproductive. Right, so you need to give they, them they, a choice on a friendly they, note. So also, um, just to to just, to continue just, my point, like yeah? just for analysis, it just I'm just really it just really pisses me off, especially when people say when I say something and people say. Like, oh, that's just your opinion. And I was like, yeah, I know it's my opinion. That's why I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I, over time, I became more sensitive. And, um, you know, yeah, the, 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 the moment when I decided, okay, I'm going to try to at least uh, become a vegetarian. And I walked into the, the supermarket for the first time after making that decision of trying. Uh, I had a completely different experience. I actually looked at, you know, the, the meat uh, uh, ale. I think, the, yeah, aisle? meat ale. Uh, aisle, okay, yeah. And uh, I saw just parts of that animals lying over there. I never saw them in that way, you know. Well, look, uh, I, I, I have I, to buy meat. For my kids, I have mm -hmm. to buy milk and cheese and, yeah. you know, all those things. And not only that, I have to cook it for them. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's important that we talk about uh, not only your right to choose, which I know Armin doesn't like these words because, of course, people have their own <laughs> rights, but uh, a yeah. lot of vegan parents who force uh, their choices onto their children because they think they're doing what's right for them. I think that, um, you know, the last thing I really want to say about veganism is that it is a personal choice. Um, I don't think that it's something that you should force onto anyone, including your children um, or those around you. I think everyone should be allowed to make their own choice and not have it forced on them. Um, and I think that, you know, we should just work more towards understanding who our allies really are not trying to nitpick our own community apart it's yes. not a, a show of, of who's more vegan it's not um every little change helps every yes. bit you reduce helps not only your yes. health i i don't think that it's completely healthy to cut out meat because we talk about the the deficiencies of iron and b12 uh being a vegan you do have to take supplements but um you also shouldn't have a complete diet of meat both are unhealthy. Who uh, does that? Oh, sorry. Jordan Peterson does that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, Jordan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> but other than him and his and his kids, who else has only a pure meat diet? I don't know. Is that even? Uh, I live Barely in Texas. a thing. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry okay. my views are skewed here. But... Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're gonna uh, lose Jordan Peterson by the way very soon because of this. He's like, what the hell is he doing? I don't understand. He only eats steak. Only steak. <laughs> it's weird. 
<laughs> yeah, it's so, insane. But, but uh, to continue on the point that Ali made, um, uh, most of the okay, um, so in Western countries, meat consumption is gradually declining, and most of the gain is not from people who go vegetarian or vegan, but it's from meat eaters who eat less meat than they used to on average. Which is awesome. uh, so. And we, we should acknowledge that, that this is progress being made by people who are meat eaters mm. um, and not and not just by people who turn uh, vegan or vegetarian. Um, and another point I also wanted to make is that, uh, um, so I, my, my emotions changed towards towards seeing meat and eating meat. And I eventually I just didn't want to taste it anymore. But there is also uh, a new, new industry, of course, and that's mock meat. So... The, the replacement meat. So it, it's it's plants made into a shape that really closely resembles meat. And some are bad, but, but some are pretty good. And they're getting better all the time. And some are, are just as nut- uh, nutritious or almost as nutritious as the original meat. And so it still has a lot of carbs, though, in comparison yeah. to meat. They still are, are very heavy in carbs. So. Yeah. So yeah, carbs. But, are... but they, they, they're getting better, and some are are very close to 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 the to the real meat. And so there. Um, so I started trying those, and the first time that when I tried like a vegetarian uh, chicken bits, um, uh, it was so close to real chicken. That I I felt guilty. I felt guilty for eating the, the, the vegetarian uh, chicken. <laughs> Leon, it's come a long way. Ten years ago, you stayed away from those things. See, okay? this is this just... is proof that it's more emotion. Uh, most a lot of it is emotional rather than logical. No. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, but well, I, you, I was convinced it, by rational arguments, but later the emotion also uh, showed up. But, and it, the, it, the but this is compassion, compassion for other other moment. beings suffering. So uh, it's not completely illegitimate, but you know, uh, rational uh, rational uh, arguments should be part of it. Should be the should be the grounding, the foundation of this. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, Any closing statements? Because this whole I'm really hungry now. <laughs> so, no, seriously. Okay. So I, I think um, we should be very careful. Uh, so I think uh, cultured meat will take us over, and other uh, uh, technology uh, will replace uh, cheese and milk and eggs in the long run. It will take a few years. What I've decided to do is to try and reduce my consumption of animal products until they are replaced by, by these new uh, uh, cultured meats and other products. Um, but yeah, I think we should really invest in that. If we're going to invest in anything, we should invest in cultured meat and other products which are very good at replacing this in an environmental friendly and animal friendly way which is also healthy yeah this whole conversation is going to die very soon <laughs> yeah. well in, in about eight years according to experts oh wow that's pretty good yeah all right ali any closing remarks closing remarks is that uh, i don't think that we should hate people for their food choice i don't think that we should automatically write people off uh for what they're trying to say i think both sides should listen to the other side Um, I think we need to be careful with which sources um, we put out there because when we put out uh, overly emotional, incorrect, completely information, it just makes people see the, the, how we're wrong on many parts. There's, there's plenty of abuse in the animal industry that we can properly point out uh, and not collapse everybody with just over emotional bullshit where it's bullshit um there there's enough real abuse going around that we can talk about i think that we need to stop within the vegan community uh tearing people apart over you know someone who decides to still use a leather bag that they had in high school uh i bought it back then i'm allowed to use that leather bag now if i've kept it this long Um, (laughs) and i'm going to continue to use it uh we need to stop we need to stop um, you know, if we're going to be allies in this and, and we really want, if we, if our goal is really to make a positive change, um, then we can do that together and disagree on certain things. All right. That's great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys. Um, <laughs> 
this is an example of having civil discussions, and we disagreed a lot. So yeah, <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Yes. Anyways, um, let's do this again on some other topic, preferably yeah. white supremacy. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yes, let's right? do it. I've got a lot, of, lot to say about that because not I used controversial. To be on the other side of these arguments. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> let's talk about that in then yeah. future episodes. So, if you yeah. like uh, the discussions that we have, please subscribe to Atheist Republic's YouTube channel. And yeah, thank you guys. Talk thank to you guys. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.